Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Darren Ho, uh, and welcome to our panel, Two-Spirit, How Community Drives Change. In this session, staff from CBRC's Two-Spirit programming team uh, will share some highlights of their work um, over the past year um, to unpack the impacts of the By Us, For Us framework when it is applied to two-spirit health initiatives. And we want to also bring attention to the ways that we can challenge uh, service-created barriers when it comes to two-spirit health. Today, I am joining from the unceded lands of the Shield territory on the Okanagan Nation, also coloni colonially known as Kelowna, BC. And it's not lost on me or the Two-Spirit team that our work is based in and funded for the region of BC where the borders that determine the scope and field of our work is one that has been placed here through uh, colonization. And while we are uh, working towards our programs and, init and, and, and initiatives eventually uh, reaching farther parts of Turtle Island, we also reflect on the many communities and many people that we have that have welcomed us and worked with us so far on this uh, west side, close to the coast region of this land. In this session, you'll hear from Jesse Dame, our Two-Spirit Program Manager, and Martin Warburg, our Two-Spirit Program Coordinator, as well as myself, the Associate Director of Population-Specific Programs um, of CBRC. Using Summit Magic, um, AKA modern technology and expertise from our communications team, um, you'll first hear from Jesse Martin and myself via a pre recorded uh, presentation that we recorded for you. Um, and then Jesse Martin and I, live in real time, uh, will be here to answer any of your questions. So throughout the presentation, we encourage um, and invite folks to use uh, the chat box or the QA box to. Um, Actually, I think it's just the chat box for in this room. Um, so we invite folks to use the chat box to um, ask our team any questions that you may have, uh, and we'll try and get to them at the end. So first, I'll pass the mic over to a recorded version. Oh, there is a Q&A box, sorry. So yes, use the Q&A box or use the chat box. Send us any questions you may have. Uh, first, I will pass the mic over to uh, a recorded version of Jesse Martin and myself. So over to our past selves. Hello all and welcome to the Two-Spirit Programming How Community Drives Change presentation. The goal of this presentation is to capture our journey within the development of the Two-Spirit Program within CBRC and how the Two-Spirit community continues to direct and develop the work being done. We will highlight the current work and the pilots that, we're, that are underway and how we continue to move forward. Within every presentation, um, I always like to ensure that we acknowledge um, where we are and where we've come. So I would, today I would like to acknowledge that we're joining um, from the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish, which lies within the shared territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, Squamish, and Stolo Nations. And the purpose of a land acknowledgement to me and the teachings that have been shared to me are to really center ourselves in what we're currently doing and the responsibility that comes with the education that we're learning today um, and the last few days at this conference. Um, I'll pass it over to Martin for um, to go first, just to introduce uh, yourself, Martin. Hi, uh, my name is Martin Morberg. I am proudly Two-Spirit. I'm Northern Toshone and Clinkett. I am the Two-Spirit Program Coordinator at CBRC, and I'm also a Two-Spirit and HIV activist. Beautiful, thanks, Martin. And again, my name is Jesse Dame. I'm very proudly Two-Spirit and Métis. Um, my parents are originally from Treaty 1 and Treaty 2 territory, which we now know as Winnipeg and St. Rose. I am the Two-Spirit Program Manager at CBRC, and I'm a certified registered nurse, meaning I work within sexual health within a certified practice setting. Darren? And yes, hi everyone. My name is Darren Ho. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a settler here of Asian descent. I'm Chinese and I identify as a queer person of color and also a gay man. And while I'm not Indigenous or Two-Spirit, I have the very great honor of supporting this work uh, since currently our Two-Spirit program, due to how it's funded, is a provincial program in BC. So while I'm not the one leading this work, uh, part of my job is supervising and supporting Jesse and Martin in the various projects that come out of the Two-Spirit program. Um, so to give kind of an overview of 
um, the Two-Spirit program. I'll first start by saying that decolonizing CBRC is an ongoing effort. Um, historically, CBRC, as many folks know, has been uh, very white, cis, gay men oriented, as that was the makeup of the founding members of the organization. Um, and how we got from that starting point to where we are now as a national organization with a dedicated Two-Spirit and Indigenous focus program was very much built from the labor and advocacy of Indigenous folks who guided us and challenged us to do better and also held us accountable to doing better for Indigenous communities. So I want to acknowledge the folks who gave us their time and efforts in building out the space that we now have for Two-Spirit conversations, research, and programs. Harlan Pruden, Rocky James, Florence James, Bill White, and Kevin Barlow. These are some of the folks who took the time to connect with us, particularly our executive director, Jody Jollimore, and our staff members, and shared their experiences and expertise with us so that CBRC could do meaningful work with Indigenous communities. At 2016 summit, CBRC endorsed the Canada Truth and Reconciliation Commission's 94 calls to action, and this meant changing the way that CBRC community um, recognizes Two-Spirit community members and centers their voices. So recognition would then no longer be limited to participation or as spectators, or sorry, no longer be limited to participation as spectators. Instead, Two-Spirit folks would become fully integrated into the culture of the organization and the delivery of our programs. In 2019, CBRC got approved for some funding from Provincial Health Services Authorities Innovation Funds to hire for the role of a Two-Spirit Health Promotion Lead, uh, which in many ways was a milestone for what our Two-Spirit programming would evolve into today. And at the time of hiring for this position, there were no Two-Spirit positions in any mainstream LGBTQ org. So, there, there were definitely Two-Spirit people who worked in other organizations, but their work were not solely focused on Two-Spirit people and communities and Two-Spirit health. In 2019, Glenn Tazaze, a Dene Two-Spirit man, was hired into the role of, a two, of the Two-Spirit Health Promotion Lead to lead CBRC's continued efforts towards better health programming and community-based research for Indigenous and Two-Spirit people. Also to compile and create resources for Two-Spirit communities, begin consultation work and network building. And it was through this hard work that we now have funding from First Nations Health Authority um, REACH and some other funders um, for our current Two-Spirit program led by Jesse Dean. So between Jesse, Martin and myself, we're happy to now delve into some of the many projects that we have uh, completed or some that we have in development that is by and for Two-Spirit communities. And as we go through these different projects, we mainly just want to highlight the importance of having um, Two-Spirit focus in our research, in our advocacy work, um, and in our programs. So one of the first tangible outcomes um, that we set out to produce for the Two-Spirit community members was an infographic to report back on the findings from our Sex Now 2018 survey. And the reason why we focused on that survey was because that year we collected data in person at different pride events throughout Canada. And notably, um, Two-Spirit Health Educator, uh, Cree and Two-Spirit Health Educator Harlan Pruden, who some of you may know, um, joined CBRC staff members in our in-person recruitment efforts. And that was pivotal um, because, so because we had someone who was a peer to uh, Two-Spirit folks recruit other Two-Spirit folks to do the Sex Now survey that year. We had a milestone record of having 271 Indigenous folks participate who identified as Two-Spirit, gay, bisexual, trans, or queer. And so while we often hear things um, in the past like, oh, the sample size is too small or there's just not enough data to uh, research or study um, this particular group, in 2018, Sex Now survey completed completely challenged that. Um, and so of course we wanted to report back to the communities um, our findings. Um, so we produced an infographic report, which is four pages long on findings from uh, the com uh, indigenous community, from indigenous community members. And my slides here only show what a, like a small snapshot of the overall report, which you can find on our CBRC website. 
The information, again, it was collected with the purpose of identifying issues, barriers that impact the mental health, sexual health of Two-Spirit and GBTQ plus Indigenous peoples who are very often overlooked and underreported um, in this area of research. And through this data, we were able to bring awareness to sexual practices for the specific community and thus uh, reclaiming control over the services created for this community. And from these findings, we're able to um, create tailored resources and community education tools based on current sexual practices and how aware participants are about their health issues. Um, and additionally, with this data, we hope that other agencies can better understand and invest in Two-Spirit and GBTQ plus Indigenous community resources. Thank you, Darren. Um, so another report that um, I think is extremely important for us to mention is the In Plain Sight report that I'm, I'm sure most of the folks in the audience um, have experienced or have come across. So just a quick history of the report. Um, the report really came into be in response to the, um, the finding that a number of different emergencies throughout um, BC were playing a very problematic price is right game, um, an extremely racist and discriminatory game within their emergencies betting on the, um, the alcohol level within the bloodstream of Indigenous patients who were being admitted. And there's a number of different versions of the, of the story, but that was the base summary that there was extremely problematic and discriminatory games being played um, and active, active stigma and, um, again, discrimination uh, towards Indigenous folks who were accessing services within emergencies. So from that finding or that clear documentation of these uh, events occurring, um, the In Plain Sight report was documented. And um, throughout the summer of 2020, there was a lot of calls from the In Plain Sight report team, or In Plain Sight team um, requesting stories. So CBRC um, and myself took um, it upon ourselves to really advocate for Two-Spirit representation within the report and Two-Spirit folks to come forward if, if they felt comfortable and safe to, to explain their experiences within healthcare. In November 30th, 2020, the, the full report was released with little to no uh, representation of Two-Spirit or LGBTQ uh, Indigenous folks in the report at all. Um, which was extremely upsetting. There was one little sentence that spoke to um, queer folks, but was not addressing any of the concerns um, or potential concerns that were um, raised. And then in December 2020, the In Plain Sight data report was released where there was some mention of Two-Spirit folks, but as you can see, the quotes here, while Two-Spirit, non-binary, and other gender gendered individuals were most likely to report feeling completely safe in our healthcare system, it is interesting to note that Two-Spirit, non-binary, and other gendered respondents generally felt safer than, e than either male respondents or female respondents in the identical healthcare setting and or interactions within healthcare professionals, which is extremely interesting and extremely actually problematic because that goes against every other piece of data that we have about two-spirit experiences within healthcare. Um, and there was no other context or situational uh, understanding included in this in the data report or in the full report about two-spirit and other queer and queer and trans indigenous folks. So through this, um, we found it very clear and through conversations with Harlan and another of other two-spirit um, um, mentors and knowledge keepers and elders, it was clear that something needed to be said. So we came together and wrote a response to the In Plain Sight team and the Ministry of Health, um, basically calling out that what this misrepresentation as well as this lack of visibility um, and awareness. And that we got, thankfully, and um, are, I'm glad to say that we did get a response from both the Ministry of Health as well as um, Mary Ellen's um, team. Um, in, in that response, they made it clear that about 8% of the respondents, I think it was just over 200 of the respondents just to the in -place -place report identified as two-spirit um, and two-spirit non-binary um, non are within that spectrum. And I think it's extremely interesting after what we just heard from Darren about this 8% respondent rate um, to their team, to the in -place -place site team, that, that percentage was too low. But as Darren just said and made very clear, that percentage is actually almost technically an overrepresentation. When we look at the statistics of uh, the number of Indigenous folks and the number of Two Spirit folks or self identified Two Spirit non binary folks within the Indigenous community. So to the ministry, um, that 8% was too low. But when we actually look at it through uh, an intersectional and critical lens, we are aware that that percentage is actually a great percentage. But because it was deemed as too low or um, in, there was an inability to report on it, the, the the, health, the In Plain Sight reporting team didn't report on it and then completely erased and silenced a group of more than 200 folks, which is an extremely great number. So when we really look at reports that are going out, we really need to understand and, and assess the numbers that we're seeing and ensuring that we're having visibility and representation of the numbers because to 
folks outside of this queer or outside of the queer realm or with outside of the two spirit and um, indigenous indigenous queer realm, a one percent to them is is nothing. But that one percent is us, and that is so important for us to really push back and challenge. Um, so moving forward, we will be think we will be having a meeting with the Ministry of Health and looking at ways that we can ensure visibility and representation happens. Because if we continue to live in this majority system um, society, our voices will never be brought to the forefront and will completely continue to be erased. And the, again, the main point of bringing this up is just how really looking at the data that we're utilizing, because I know there's a lot of researchers and folks in, in, in the room tonight, or today, sorry, and really looking at how the numbers are being represented and what numbers we're really focusing on. So if we're always comparing Indigenous, queer, and trans, and two-spirit folks to other folks, our numbers are always going to be lower. So then we're always going to be seeing as less than or, or the numbers are not high enough. So we need to really challenge that narrative and challenge that, that experience and ensure that we can increase that visibility and those numbers to get those stories um, heard because we know that they're out there. And if you look at the, um, the HEC Collaborative's uh, document, I think it was called Believe Me or Believe, right, Darren? I think it was called Believe Me. They like basically completely contradicted what the In Plain Sight report said about safety within our healthcare system. And it came out just a couple months before. So it's um, it's very important to, to, to look at and challenge those, those percentage and, and the decisions that are being made on how and what numbers are deemed acceptable. Happy to ask, answer questions about that also in the question period. Um, another thing that I really like, would like to highlight is the, the Two-Spirit Dry Lab. So um, Harlan wasn't able to join us today, but um, throughout the past year, we've been able to create strong relationships and build capacity within the Two-Spirit community through a number of different relationships with Two-Spirit organizations across Turtle Island, um, but one of them is with the Two-Spirit Dry Lab. So quickly, the Two-Spirit Dry Lab is a collaborative initiative of Indigenous and settler researchers and community leaders engaged in research at the intersection of indigeneity, gender, sexual orientation, and geography that works to promote um, best practices in sex and gender science and to grow new knowledge and knowledges that can be applied to improve outcomes. Additionally, the Two-Spirit Dry Lab also has a capacity building function to promote understanding and best practices for Indigenous and Two-Spirit researchers, as well as a discovery function through analysis and continuous learning and engagement with and for the Two-Spirit community. And really within the Two-Spirit Dry Lab, there's no power over, there's no hierarchy, we're all equals, we're all equal um, junior researchers, researchers and, and um, supervisors, and, and there's many folks all who are on the screen with um, a, a vast array of knowledge. And it's a beautiful place for us to come together and support each other in any of the work that we're doing and help to build capacity within the Two-Spirit community. Um, okay, now going more into the Two-Spirit programming. So as Darren said in the beginning of um, the programming uh, slide, we've done and been able to and been very fortunate and lucky to share space with a number of different Sioux Spirit elders, knowledge keepers, and community members. Um, and a lot of this work was started when Glenn was actually with CBRC. So when Glenn was with CBRC, we were able to start some consultation work and really having some clear, open, frank conversation with community members. And through the last year and a half or almost two years, we've been able to talk to a number of different Two-Spirit folks and community members throughout uh, BC. Unfortunately, more BC specific right now, as Darren said, um, and hopefully, um, but we have been actually speaking with a number of two different Two-Spirit folks throughout the whole country, um, throughout Turtle Island, but this uh, this specific report here is, is just BC specific. And um, through consultation and community um, conversations, it was very clear that um, sexual health resources and sexual health testing was extremely limited. I mean, the second, I'm, I'm sure most of us are aware, but the second you leave Vancouver or step outside of the Vancouver line, even into Burnaby, the sexual health resources greatly decreased for testing. Um, even in Vancouver, it's extremely limited right now in accessing PrEP or other services. And you go to more rural and remote communities, <clears throat> excuse me, it is even further reinforced with the, the number of systemic barriers that are in place to limit folks access to sexual health testing. And um, as a nurse who works in sexual health, I, I had some of those thoughts in my mind that were completely confirmed, um, if not completely re further conformed through these conversations with community, um, the lack of ability to access safe care 
incompetent sexual health care, that um, lack of access to testing options and services. Um, and through some of these conversations, we actually were able to talk to healthcare providers. And it was also very clear that healthcare providers were lacking um, access to education to be aware of sexual health resources, education of, to be aware and culturally safe in the communities that they worked in. Um, and it was, it was a huge realization that um, we still have a long way to go in sexual health and how do we challenge the stigma and shame attached to sexual health and to improve health outcomes for for, for two-spirit community members and, and folks within community who want services um, in regards to sexual health, but overall actual general health, there is some major gaps that were identified. And then a lot of this work and the consultation work um, is guiding what we are doing within the two-spirit programming. I'm so sorry, you could probably hear my dog in the background, but um, it's guiding all the work that we're doing. And Martin and I really um, strive and, and, uh, and are proud to say that the work that we do within the two-spirit program is driven with and for the two-spirit community so the recommendations that come from these consultations and our guidance committee which martin will talk about in a little bit um, help drive all the programming that we are developing and as two-spirit members ourselves we get to take part in it in an active beautiful role and it's ever growing and ever changing <clears throat> yeah. and then i'll pass it pass it over to Martin there. Thanks, Jesse. <clears throat> so I'll just talk a little bit about the Two Spirit uh, Guidance Committee. And so the goal for the committee was to get further direction and guidance from the Two Spirit community on program and resource development. So the committee will work um, and has been working with the Two Spirit programming team, uh, which is me and Jesse. So we discuss, review, or sorry, they discuss, review, and create recommendations and ideas relating to furthering and supporting Two-Spirit health around the province. We've also been hosting monthly meetings to hear uh, current uh, concerns and thoughts on projects occurring within the community. And so um, just to give you an example of, um, you know, CBRC's name, uh, uh, taking into consideration um, the community-based part of the name. And so I don't think that we can claim um, community-based work unless we have a diverse group of two-spirit people that are at the decision-making tables with us. And so, and in a lot of indigenous cultures, um, we're given spirit names and in those spirit names, uh, we have a responsibility to live up to our names. So when I hear community-based research center, I feel that part of living up to that name in the Two-Spirit program is um, involving the Two-Spirit community in the decision-making process. So to have that is we um, create our programming, which was based on the consultations that were done with the Two-Spirit community. And so we pulled out the recommendations and then started creating our programming based on um, the needs assessments that were done in those uh, two spirit recommendations. So to ensure that this isn't kind of an individually led uh, programming, also I myself identify as a two spirit cis man, um, I believe Jesse as well. And so in order for us to um, keep this community based, we need to have representation of a diverse group of two spirit identifying folks. So um, yeah, to ensure that we're remaining community based, uh, we host our monthly meetings um, and also have broadened our networks throughout the province of BC by working with this guidance committee. So the Two Spirit photo shoot uh, was actually um, intended to promote our medicine bundle pilot, which well, uh, we will be uh, discussing shortly. So um, we wanted to make sure that we tried to get together a very diverse group of uh, Two Spirit representation. And because that spectrum is so vast, it's it, it can be difficult and challenging for us um, to kind of capture uh, the two spirit identity and culture uh, through a small group of people. So we tried our best to kind of um, broaden that diversity spectrum uh, within this photo shoot. And so our first, like our initial um, 
intent was to use these images to promote our medicine bundle pilot, but also we'd like to use the images in our future initiatives and programs. And the purpose of these images as well is to also increase the visibility of two spirit people in healthcare settings. So when we walk into AIDS organizations, when we walk into, you know, rural and remote nursing clinics, or we're walking into any healthcare settings as two spirit people, do we see ourselves in those settings? Can we identify with anything within the environment that um, relates to us and our identity? And it was actually mentioned in the Two-Spirit consultations, uh, some of the interviews that were done is, is it made such an impactful difference when there was an elder present, when there was a smudge bowl present, uh, when there was someone that was, um, you know, uh, that identified as an Indigenous person and how much of a difference it made for that individual to, to feel safe. So I guess another purpose of this is also just the cultural safety and um, trying to increase the visibility of, of us two spirit folks within healthcare settings. So um, these images will be shared uh, quite widely. We're gonna turn them into digital shareables. Uh, we're also gonna have hard copy posters that are gonna be sent throughout the province. Um, sadly, um, a lot of our initiatives coming up are just BC specific for now, um, hence the word pilot, but we're hoping to kind of broaden the reach uh, in the future. And so just really excited to um, have these beautiful, you know, two spirit indigenous queer and trans folks that can come together. Um, all of the people that were hired identified as either two spirit or indigenous. Um, there was a photo credit that goes out to, uh, to NASA photography, also um, very talented Tyler Jacobs, who is a fashion designer, makeup artist, uh, powwow dancer. And so this was really a collective effort of two spirit folks that came together and created these beautiful images. So uh, stay tuned for the digital shareables and hoping that you can share within your networks. I guess just to add to, I think, we're though, like Martin said, we're very BC specific. We're both very willing to support any other province or any other folks outside of BC in any way, shape or form that we can um, within within the realms of expanding two-spirit programming. Okay, would you like to go first, Martin, or do you want me to? How that or Jesse? <laughs> uh, typical. Um, so one of the biggest parts of our programming in our portfolio that uh, Martin and I and Darren have been working on is the Mendel, or the Medicine Bundle Project or the Medicine Bundle Pilot. Um, many folks may have heard of it. We've been talking about it a lot, um, thankfully. Um, so the Medicine Bundle Project is um, our attempt and, and an attempt um, from recommendations in community and through the guidance committee to weave together or take a two-eyed scene approach towards a traditional medicine bundle, um, which historically had a lot of meaning within um, different Indigenous communities where we would utilize traditional medicines and our, our sacred items and put them in a bundle and pack and carry them with us um, to utilize in ceremony or within um, healing ceremonies or different different events. So through that approach of, of sacred medicines and, and items, we also weave together some sexual health um, items into this medicine bundle to challenge the shame and stigma attached to sexual health that has been forced upon through colonization and religion and a number of other things um, and bring them back to kind of that, that, that center, that, that sacred piece within us and kind of the, the, the main motto or part of the motto would be bringing the sacredness back to sex, whether it's in a bathroom stall or in within, within your bedroom, but really talking about how how sex is sacred in a sense that sex is a powerful piece and that um, if we're supported to do it in, in, a, in a process that we feel comfortable in, then um, there should be no shame or stigma attached to it. So through this uh, traditional medicine bundle, we will be utilizing uh, these beautiful wraps done by Laura, uh, 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 Laura, what's their last name? Laura, Laura Panay and Julian Edwards, uh, yeah. both on Anishinaabe Cree amazing folks who hand sewed um, all of the bundles that you can see here. This is just one of the examples with these beautiful pockets that wrap all up. And then within the bundle, we will have a number of different sexual health supplies. So lubricants, internal, external condoms. Um, uh, there's going to be either a dry blood spot testing kit or uh, an instant HIV self-testing kit, um, resources to direct care to um, 
uh, nurses and healthcare physicians in regards to sexual health testing, as well as First Nations Health Authority supplies and information about getting access to the doctor of the day. And then um, through the traditional pieces, we'll include some traditional medicines, so which can include anything from sage, sweetgrass, um, cedar, tobacco, um, lavender, devil's club, um, salve, um, bear grease, so a number of different things. So basically, the, the framework of it will be that folks once with they with, if they identify um, as living in BC, um, Indigenous, um, and what was the third requirement? I think over eighteen. Is yeah, that what over eighteen. Yeah, current, yeah, over eighteen. Um, folks can go to the website um, that will be launched in the next couple of weeks or couple of months, and they'll be able to. The the main point is for us to create our own bundles, create our own sacred items, to put together, and then um, Martin and I, with intention and with purpose, will pack the bundles ourselves and ship them to folks' houses, um, and then be provided supports pre and post um, after use. Um, which is uh, such an important piece that we want to make sure that there's direct connections to care, not. Um, a website or hotline that takes a long time to get to somebody that we want somebody on the other end of the phone um, if there's any questions or concerns. And um, yeah, Martin, if you would like to jump in. Um, yeah, so thank you for that, Jesse. I think it's really important to acknowledge uh, where the concept of two-eyed seeing came from. So the creation of the concept mm -hmm. was gifted by uh, a Mi'kmaq elder, um, I believe Albert Marshall. So under the two-eyed seeing concept is weaving together, like in one eye we see um, with the indigenous knowledge and strengths. And in the second eye we see with the settler kind of uh, knowledge and strengths. And we use those eyes together um, for the benefit of all. And so that was really a concept that we wanted to use when creating the medicine bundle. I also think too, like what's really important is that when we think of testing or HIV or kind of um, healthcare, it's often addresses a lot of the physical um, like realm that we experience in accessing this kind of testing. But I think an indigenous approach too is, is a very spiritual aspect. And so I'm, it is my hope that um, through these medicines and indigenous knowledge and this indigenous resource is that um, we'll be able to nurture kind of that quadrant. And so it's, it's um, an attempt to uh, a more holistic approach in accessing um, different testing options. And also Jesse, um, you know, I'd mentioned creating pathways uh, to accessing and linking people to care. So, um, just another thing I'd like to um, acknowledge as well is that, you know, a lot of the supplies and the, the creation um, is by Indigenous folks. So the money that we're spending is going into Indigenous services. So, you know, the medicines, um, the materials, uh, the people that have sewn and created these bundle wraps, these very beautiful bundle wraps, are all um, Indigenous Two-Spirit folks that are contributing in these ways. Um, also, um, this is again in response to, um, you know, the recommendations that were done in the consultations, as well as the Two-Spirit Guidance Committee uh, offering recommendation um, in regards to this uh, medicine bundle project. Um, and I'll just end with this is that when the two spirit program was given 500 self test kits to disseminate uh, to indigenous and two spirit folks throughout the province of BC, I really wanted to make sure that we were giving a tool that was a spiritual and indigenous approach, but also that's something that people can identify with. Like this isn't a survey that you sign on. It's it's not a cold call. You don't put in a request form and just have like just the self test kit sent to your address. Um, this was something that, you know, packs some nourishment, um, creates pathways, um, is a bit of a spiritual approach. And, you know, there was a lot of heart and, and good spirit put into this project, uh, both by me and Jesse, the recommendations from community, the two spirit guidance um, uh, committee, and as well, like this medicine bundle pilot is a result of um, kind of the trail uh, that's been uh, created by the two spirit elders that had created this uh, program. So super excited to launch. Um, yeah.
did we want to talk a bit about the two spirit messenger program or is that... i was just going to ask yeah please okay. so i think so quickly just regarding the launch we are in the final processes of getting the project and the pilot done and hopefully the the launch will happen in the next couple of weeks to, to, to month and a bit so please stay tuned um, website is being developed and and will be coming up in the next little bit and i would love if martin you want to touch quickly on the the messenger the trust so messengers just, which are directly tied okay. in so just a little bit about the um, messenger program, like just thinking um, to like trying to capture that like grassroots initiative um, kind of vibe when creating these um, kind of projects is that, um, you know, we want to keep this as community based as possible. And I feel that it's really colonial. Uh, uh, even for an Indigenous person like me to bring a resource or a framework into a community that I'm not from and say, you know, here's your solution. We have, we know what you need, we know what your problem are, what your problems are, and we have your solution. So to avoid doing that, it's been taught to me and demonstrated to me that community members, Indigenous communities, are the experts of their own communities and they can identify the networks, the resources and the strengths and the experts within their own communities. And so as a part of that, we're going to try and establish a two-spirit um, uh, messenger program, which is um, you know, a two-spirit representative uh, within one of the health regions uh, throughout BC that is gonna help us promote um, this project. And so inviting them to the decision making tables so that we can listen to them and to really acknowledge and um, help them identify the strengths within their communities and support them in how they know how to serve their own communities. So bringing their needs to the table, bringing their ideas, their strengths and their knowledge to their specific community to the table. And then it's me and Jesse's responsibility uh, to respond to that. And, and one of the ways we're responding to that is with this resource and uh, you know, willing to be extremely flexible, um, tailoring to the specific needs of each community. And so we wanted to create um, this uh, pathway uh, through two spirit messengers. So we're hoping to establish uh, relationships with the messengers. Um, you know, we're hoping to have, uh, I think it's two messengers from each uh, health region throughout the province uh, that can help us, um, you know, disseminate these throughout the province, keeping in mind that, uh, you know, the way we work as Indigenous people is through relationship building. So there's going to be a lot of uh, pre-support, support throughout the whole process, and then post-support. So, uh, and a lot of follow-up to ensure that um, they have what they need to be these, uh, you know, empowered leaders and messengers within their own communities, you know, that can be equipped with uh, things like the medicine bundle uh, to create options and, you know, uh, access to testing for uh, their two spirit and indigenous community members within their communities, um, trying to highlight uh, the strengths and, and build those relationships, create those pathways, and uh, just really support our two spirit communities throughout the province. Thank you, Martin. Great, thanks, Martin. And maybe before we move on to the next slide, I'll just mention that um, this Medicine Bundle project is a big collaborative effort. And so this Medicine Bundle project is uh, made possible by Reach Nexus. Feast Center for Indigenous STBBI Research, University of Victoria, National Microbiology Laboratory, PHSA, and also First Nations Health Authority. And I just wanted to reiterate, sorry, that this is created by and for Indigenous Two-Spirit Queer and Trans folks. Yeah. <clears throat> and we look forward to having more conversations about this if anybody has any questions, either after this presentation or um, please follow up with our emails. That'll be on the last slide. So what's next? Um, just quickly in summary, I know we're out of time here, but what's next? Uh, we are we are currently working on a naloxone awareness campaign. So to increase awareness of nasal naloxone um, and injectable naloxone throughout the, the, the throughout the province um, and how we can increase access to, 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 to both types of naloxone. Um, we're seeing a huge decrease in accessible nasal naloxone within pharmacies and throughout the province, even though um, it is a status right. So a medication that is included for status folks and a right for other folks in the province. So increasing awareness and different processes that we can um, 
get increased access. Um, another part that we're working on is a prep access resource. So um, a specifically Indigenous tailored uh, prep access resource where we can outline the, the pathways and um, process to get to prep. I know most folks, if you, especially if you work within healthcare within BC, we are experiencing a huge influx of folks wanting to access prep and a huge shortage of folks who are able to provide that initial prescription and the follow-up because with a, when you're on prep, you have to see a physician every three months or a, a nurse every three months and we do not have the capacity right now to so trying to figure out other um, routes and pathways for folks to access prep especially folks that don't live within a center where they can access um, a sexual health clinic regularly um, also we're currently working on the development with a number of different indigenous researchers throughout turtle island on an indigenous investigators program so for a long time cbrc has offered an investigators program which is a, a huge support uh, or a support pathway or programming for for, for researchers who are new um, and to provide some foundational information about um, ways to do research and we are wanting to not just indigenize because uh, we can't just uh, as i usually say and martin has taught me we can't just simply stick on um a dream catcher and, and, and expect folks to now deem it as indigenized or indigenous. So we want to utilize some of the frameworks of the investigators, investigators program, but actually create a program that's indigenous specific, that's including a two eyed seeing approach and, and indigenous methodologies to support young indigenous, not necessarily age wise, but young indigenous researchers who are new in research. Um, and then, as always, we are always wanting and working um, with new partnerships um, with an Indigenous organization. So, as we said in the beginning, CBRC is not an Indigenous-led organization. And uh, Martin and I's role, though both of us are Indigenous and with an Indigenous program, we want to ensure that we support Indigenous-led and run organizations any way that we can. So, to be used and 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 support any way that we can through CBRC and through our work at CBRC. And I think. That is all. So thank you so much. Yeah, I think that is all. Um, thanks for listening to us present. And but I think before we go to our question and answer period, maybe we'll just very quickly, uh, Jesse, Martin, and also myself, if you can just share like one highlight of the Two Spirit program for you personally or professionally. I think I can go for for me, the like the main highlight, I think. I've been working within sexual health in the, within the two-spirit realm for 10 um, plus years. And it's always been, unfortunately, a, an afterthought or a side of the side of the desk um, um, activity. And for me, this position that I'm currently in at CBRC and the work that we're doing at two-spirit folks, two-spirit queer and trans indigenous folks are at the forefront of everything that we do. And it's very refreshing and um, great to feel that, to be able to do that, to be able to have meetings and conversations with two-spirit folks and that's a part of my job it's not something that i have to squeeze in it's something that i'm supported to build relationships and that's so important i believe moving forward um to and continue to give space back to to indigenous community is that we support relationship building and the space to have conversations and build that love and warmth and kindness martin uh, I think for me, just coming from a grassroots background, it's really exciting to me to be able to um, help create um, and facilitate discussions with two spirit community members and really like take into consideration um, their thoughts, suggestions, ideas, recommendations, and compile them together and then be able to, you know, create projects uh, and gift it back to the community. So it's really a lot of the programming is in response to um, the recommendations coming from our two spirit community members. So um, I think that's probably the biggest highlight uh, for me and to be able to just play a small part in uh, breaking trail for, you know, the baby two spirits that are going to be up and coming. So um, the work really excites me. Yeah. And I feel I feel really good about um, its origin. Um, you know, the, the allies that support it and uh, the, um, you know, the framework that we work under that this is like created by and for two spirit people led by two spirit people in response to what the community is recommending so. Yeah, that's perfect. That That's a lot of what excites me as well, uh, but I will just mention two things for myself. Um, a real highlight is the medicine bundle pilot project. I'm like very much looking forward to the launch of that. I feel like it's going to make lots of waves and it's going to be very impactful. I know like a lot of folks have already um, talked or are anticipating um, are just anticipating the launch of that. And then and then another highlight for me is um, just seeing the constant 
uh, like invitations and like the reception that um, you two get, like the invitations um, that come your way for like different collaborations with uh, different organizations or um, when you guys are invited to uh, present or guest speak or things like that. I think that just says a lot about how much this work is needed and how much, um, how much, how important it is for um, two fair folks to uh, be taking this space. Um, um, and it's just so nice that like, like I feel like the the invites are coming and so people are people are realizing that this is important work that needs to be done. Um so thank you. Um thank you everyone. Now we can go to questions, I think. Yes. <laughs> Um, thanks everyone. So I know we have to end at maybe five minutes uh, before the hour, but until then, um, we have some like a short amount of time for some questions. Um, they're not so much a question, but maybe just a comment um, that maybe Jesse or Martin, you can speak on in the comments already. Uh, Jonathan Potskin um, wrote, I wonder if we can look at the doctors who are with the virtual clinics to be prep ready for Indigenous and non-Indigenous people outside of urban centers that don't have easy access. Sure, I can start with that. Thanks, Darren, and thanks, Jonathan, and good morning, everybody. Um, so FNHA does have their virtual doctor of the day um, who is accessible for folks um, all throughout the province or for, for Indigenous folks throughout the province who are aware of PrEP and should be able to support PrEP access. Um, the issue is limitations and follow-up that we're experiencing is, is, like I said quickly in the video, is that folks who access PrEP usually get a month supply, so they have follow-up at one month and then are follow-up every three months, and that's routine testing and blood work. So folks are experiencing um, issues getting to the lab or um, finding a physician that will be able to stay consistent um, with them. Um, within Vancouver, we do have a lot of nurse involvement, but even that within the clinics that I work at is we are over capacity, like booking two months out um, for folks to even start prep. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a huge issue now that prep awareness has grown so much within the queer community and within the queer indigenous community, um, the system can't meet the demand. Yeah, I agree. And then so related to that, another question that came in through the Q&A box is, do you have any plans to make connections or collaborate with Indigenous health teams, that's uh, patient navigators or uh, clinicians within hospitals? Me? Okay. Um, thank you for that question. Um, we don't have clear, we don't have uh, official plans in place, but I think that is a great idea and a great way to start to get uh, increased awareness of PrEP in acute care settings, but also increase awareness of other um, support services from CBRC, as well as to SINs and other two-spirit organizations, if we can um, start connecting to um, patient navigators and, and uh, Indigenous health teams throughout the, the health authorities in acute care settings. Great. Um, so that will be something I can Um, I think maybe as we wait for maybe one more question to come in, we might have time for one more, but I guess until one more question comes in, uh, Martin or Jesse, maybe you could tell us about how the uh, Two-Spirit Gathering went on this past Wednesday. Give us a little insight. <laughs> I guess I can share a little bit. Um, it was a really beautiful event. Um, we had some uh, Two-Spirit uh, leaders throughout Turtle Island that were in attendance. I kind of opened uh, with a blessing. Um, I think more importantly, uh, a lot of community members had an opportunity to speak up. It was a really um, nurturing uh, kind of experience and a really safe space for us to gather and uh, just share our perspectives, experiences, and you know what do next steps look like. Uh, we shared experience of establishing networks um, and you know creating community partnerships. Uh, we had a panel of six people um, that identifies two spirit. Um, and then we were able to host a community discussion and, and hear from our community members. So it's, I think one perspective that I really learned a lot from was this perspective that, 
you know, we can't be picking the same six people to sit on a panel and like the need for diversity to really elevate and empower um, all of our community members that we all have medicine, we all have experience, we all have um, gifts that we can contribute to the work. So it's, it's not just about, you know, um, people with an education background or, or a lived experience background or, you know, like this, like what is the spectrum of two spirit and how do we be inclusive of all of the members in our family? Um, and so I really took a lot from, from that perspective that was shared. <clears throat> so we're really excited to be um, creating a community shareable, which um, me and Jesse will be creating uh, soon. And it's kind of a gift back uh, to the community. So it's, it's really about our collective voice, um, ranging from you know, a variety, very diverse group of Two-Spirit folks um, that we can gift, <clears throat> gift back to organizations and, uh, and to our community members. So I don't wanna be a, a, a whistleblower or, <laughs> or leak any of our valuable information as Two-Spirit folks, but we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't really have much to, like Martin exactly what Martin said it was a, a beautiful space and it's just such a different environment when you're in a room with folks who just understand you and, and you don't have to explain yourself or define yourself in any way we can just get to the work and get things moving so it was it's always refreshing and always um, a, a, an amazing space to breathe in um, so very thankful that we were able to to do that and, and look forward to further ones um like it is it was clear in those conversations that we need to be doing more um networking and connecting um processes as much as we can if possible great um and i'm not seeing any more questions in the chat so i'm going to just remind folks to uh complete the evaluation question it'll just take a minute so please go ahead and do that um, and I'll end the session early so that we have more time for folks to transition over to the next session. Uh, so thank you very much, Jesse. Thank you, Martin. And thank you to everyone who worked behind the scenes. Um, and also thank you for folks for attending um, the session. And we will chat again soon. Thank you so much.